admitting folks as they come in. We're so excited to have our friends from Inspectional Services here to guide us through the process of finding your space and working with them and how to work with them and who to talk to. Um, a special shout out to Commissioner Tana, Tanya Del Rio and Jessica Thomas as well. I think that both put in a lot for this. So thank you so much for making the time. Um, I, I know many of the space grantees know who I am. I know some folks at ISD may not know who I am. So I'm Aliyah Forrest. I'm the Director of Business Strategy for the Office of Economic Opportunity and Inclusion, one of the programs that I've been helping support um, is the Space Grant Program, and that's where all of these wonderful folks are coming from. So they are all grantees that are receiving grant funding to open new storefronts throughout the city, um, and the industries vary um, from a restaurant all the way to a magic show restaurant to a plant shop. Um, who else do I see? I see daycare, childcare, barbershop, um, lots of different industries represented today. Oh, and an escape room here. <laughs> so lots, lots to learn. And I'll, I'll pass it off to you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, perfect. And thank you for having us again. We appreciate it. Um, we'll start with an introduction from our wonderful commissioner, Tanya Dabria. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Aliyah. Thanks, Jessica, for putting this together and a shout out to all the businesses. Um, I have a special place in my heart for the childcare businesses because I have worked with them in the past. So special shout out. But honestly, uh, thank you all, all of you for uh, making the city as vibrant as it is. And I really am excited to see what you're going to bring to the table uh, as your businesses move forward on this process. So my name is Tanya Del Rio. I um, have been the commissioner over here at ISD for a little over three months and have been really struck by the breadth and depth of work that uh, people in this department are doing every day. And most importantly, by their willingness and motivation and enthusiasm to work with constituents and make your journey through our processes as um, painless and smooth as possible. So um, I'll let the team introduce themselves and um, want to just leave you with the message of wherever you are in our process, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Uh, we really want to be in constant communication with us because we are dealing with regulations and codes that, so that sometimes can be confusing and uh, just having a human to talk about it, to talk about your process with you can sometimes help. So consider us a resource and um, your Sherpa or your guide through um, the process, not just with ISD, um, but as you deal with a number of different agencies um, that, that are part of this. And um, I also wanted to shout out our colleagues at the fire department that made it up here that are definitely gonna be working with you as well. So um, I kind of want to pass it to, sure. to Joe first um, to introduce yourself on behalf of the fire department and then just kind of do do the whole ISD team and, and the rest of the fire team. Sure. Uh, Joe Walsh, Boston Fire, I'm the Assistant Fire Marshal. Um, we were asked to uh, kind of explain what our role is. I, I think that is kind of a mystery <laughs> to a lot of uh, a lot of people. Unfortunately, I, I think they, they think they're past the finish line and Everything's done because ISDs checked all their boxes and then they find they have a, a mountain of work to do at fire. So I, I think uh, any opportunity to get that information out to, um, to the customers uh, that, that there's, uh, there's two, two offices in 1010 Mass Ave here that they have to uh, play nicely with. I, I think that's, uh, this will be a great opportunity. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's go with Jill. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, Jill Cox. Um, I deal with a lot of the permits coming in the door and a lot of small businesses that stumble as they walk through our doors and we try to guide a lot. Um, by all means to echo what the commissioner says, do not be afraid to get in touch with us. And we do a lot of work hand in hand with BFD, so they're a good partner with us. So anything we can help with, please reach out. Good afternoon, John Ulrich. I'm the Assistant Commissioner of Environmental Services here at ISD. We're the rodent control division. We deal with rodent control across the city, uh, but we also license uh, dumpsters. Uh, small businesses are required to have a site cleanliness license, so we manage that program. We also have an auto shop division 
uh, we uh, license auto shops uh, and auto related businesses. Good afternoon, everyone. Dan Prendergast, I'm the Assistant Commissioner with the Inspectional Services Health Division. Uh, we license, permit, and inspect all restaurants, food service establishments, swimming pools, recreational summer camps, bath establishments, um, amongst others. You know, obviously, we have a primary focus on food service and restaurant businesses. So. Happy to help and assist, answer any questions uh, some space grant awardees may have, and happy to help. Great. And I'm Jessica Thomas. I'm the Assistant Commissioner of our Constituent Services Division, um, so I will help play an important role in making sure you're connected to the proper divisions. Um, if you ever need assistance or if you have questions, you're always welcome to start with our team. Um, we'd be happy to make sure you're properly connected to the right folks. Um, but we're also interested in making sure that you have the proper resources um, and that we're uh, intentional about answering your questions and helping you and also working with all of our departments uh, to make sure we're providing the best uh, feedback and customer service. So really happy to be here. We miss Glenn. Oh, we miss Glenn. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Go Can't ahead. forget Glenn. And Paul's on. Uh, <laughs> Glenn Martin. I'm a fire captain, Boston Fire Department. I work for the Certificate of Occupancy Unit. Mm -hmm. uh, I work along with the Assistant Fire Marshal. Uh, our unit basically deals with people coming into the counter with questions about how to occupy their, their, their space safely. And like I said, we, uh, like the Chief said, we try to help people and help them navigate through with, along with ISD and answer questions and get people moving along in the right direction and get their place of business open as soon as they can. And then Paul, are you on? I am on. Um, this hey. is Paul Williams. I'm the Assistant Commissioner for Plans and Zoning. Um, we basically play an administrative role here in terms of the, uh, uh, the permit application process. Uh, we call it the long form uh, part of the application process for um, uh, businesses uh, establishing uh, mainly sort of their use, but if there is any building going on, uh, we manage this sort of the intake and, and review of, of all documents related to um, permitting applications. Perfect. Okay. So if you don't mind, we can share our screen um, and pull up the slide. Is this big enough? Can everyone see it okay? You probably want to slide show it. No one can make it. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, great. So welcome to the Space Grant Information Session. Um, you know we just did our introductions. Um, so you got to meet uh, part of our teams here. And our contact information is also available. Um, and this has also been shared with the small business team. So we'll make sure if anyone does need a copy of our slides, we'll be going through roughly 15 slides, um, hoping to uh, save some time to answer questions. Um, but you do have our team's uh, information here. Um, and we will go through. OK, here we go. So um, as far as inspectional services overview, um, the inspectional services department administers and enforces building, housing, health, sanitation and safety regulations mandated by the city and state governments. Uh, we're made up of five regulatory divisions and our goal is to protect and improve the quality of life for all Boston residents. Um, our mission is also to serve the public by protecting the health, safety and environmental stability of Boston's businesses and residential communities. <clears throat> Okay, so when you're getting ready to open your business, um, the first step would be to understand the process and make a plan. And so uh, the Mayor's Office of Economic Development offers one-stop resources for all businesses in the city, uh, including the Small Business Development Team, uh, Boston Main Streets, um, and they both offer a ton of resources um, to not just start, but to help grow and build your business uh, here in Boston. Um, uh, you can also start by connecting with your neighborhood business manager. Um, the NBMs are experts in small business uh, businesses and can guide you on how to open a restaurant in Boston or uh, other um, businesses that you may have. So uh, there's also live links here. So we have links to contact experts, contact people in your community. Uh, but the Economic Development Center offers um, also workshops to, to increase access and opportunities uh, such as these. Um, and we want to make sure that they're tailored to your business. 
Okay, so we'll go through the zoning part of it. Well, step two is choosing a location. Uh, so, do you want to? Yeah, yeah, so I'm just going to jump in here and walk through it. Um, first thing you want to do is check your zoning in the neighborhood to make sure whatever your proposal is, that not only is the neighborhood allowed for the usage, but also the building itself has the proper occupancy. Um, if it doesn't, then there's these steps that you would have to follow, which is like checking your legal use, um, filing for a long-form building permit to declare your use. So if you're a restaurant and you're in a residential zone, a restaurant is a conditional use, you'll have to go through a zoning board of appeals process. Um, so before you sign any leases or anything like that, you definitely want to be ahead of the game by checking your zoning and moving forward with your building permits. Um, once you know that, okay, I'm going to take the big step and go forward with my process, you'll file a long-form building permit. You'll have all your designed space, which is an architectural stamp drawing. Um, go with the permits and then your structure, if you're doing any kind of short-form minor work, which is non-structural or any kind of long form work, including fire alarm or sprinkler, that's gonna be the difference of a long form permit or a short form permit. Once all that work is done and building inspectors are signed off on it, you've worked with our partners in the fire department for any regulations they have as far as stand pipe, fire alarm, sprinkler. Um, there's things such as flame certs, uh, places of assembly, quarterly inspections. There's a lot that goes on downstairs with the fire department that we try to do all together to help you get open quicker. So once all that's done in an order, you'll come in and you'll apply for your certificate of occupancy. It's a pretty straightforward process, copies of all your permits. You can get into it more individually as you call and try to reach out. Thank you the next slide, mm -hmm. please. Um, so we have subs permits that go along with your actual business as well. So if somebody's gonna pull a plumbing permit, gas permit, any electricals, including fire alarm, low voltage sprinkler, they are all online applications, with the exception of a few of them. Your licensed professionals will need to apply for them. It's straightforward. Then we have the Boston Fire Department Prevention Division that also requires permits. Um, we have a link attached as well. I don't know if you want to jump in there for anything, Chief. Or uh, certainly, there's a there's a portal that, that exists for the Fire Prevention Division. Uh, I, I think. About 90% of our permits, uh, maybe a few of the, the more unusual ones, but uh, I, I think any anyone that's trying to stand up a business or open up, build a building, uh, all available online uh, with links. Uh, certainly have folks downstairs that are very knowledgeable. They can help you navigate the process. Um, I, I think the best way I can explain it, what Jill just said, basically, it, it almost seems like when we went to that second slide, the average person would say, well, it seems like there's a lot of redundancy. Um, the, the truth is something I, I learned along my progression, about three quarters of the building code is uh, fire related. Uh, so that's why you, you see that overlap. And, and I think if uh, if you take the uninformed person, they don't realize it, uh, they, they get the majority of the ISD process done and they're just about finished. Uh, they, they can almost, you know, see the ribbon cutting ceremony coming up and they realize they need a sign off for a life safety walkthrough from fire. And then when they find out to get to that point from fire, there's about five inspections that they need to do. It's kind of a lengthy process. So um, I think the more information that's available, the better. And, and the sooner that information is available, these customers, the better. Right. So the fire department and inspectional services, if you have places of assembly that are over 49 people, you're definitely going to be working with us on the end process, which is place of assembly and stipulated inspection. So on that piece there, you'll be getting drawings done for your capacities. Um, it all ties together permit into a certificate of occupancy into your place of assembly, your certificate of inspection. And during that process, then you get looped into, you're gonna work with the licensing board and possibly the health division. So with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Dan to speak about the health division. Yeah, perfect. So thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. So with some, with some approval, you know, depending on your specific type of business, you may also need, uh, you know, one or more of the following approvals as well. So if you have live entertainment license or non live entertainment licenses, uh, you can typically reach out to the licensing board on that. There's pool table license needed for establishments that have pool tables uh, within the premises of the establishment. 
uh, sidewalk cafe permit, the valet parking permit, if your you know, business is proposing to do valet parking, liquor license, obviously with the sale or distribution of liquor and alcohol, you need um, a liquor license to do so. And, you know, those are issued and um, distributed by the Boston Licensing Board, a website, you know, attached. Um, apply for a site cleanliness license. Uh, our colleagues here at ISD, the Environmental Services Division, uh, headed up by John Ulrich as the Assistant Commissioner, you'd want to reach out to them to apply for a site cleanliness license. Those are mandatory uh, for the uh, trash uh, removal and storage on the premises of the establishment. Um, Apply for a dumpster placement permit. If larger than three cubic yards, you need to file for an annual permit application form. And a business certificate uh, is required for all businesses. Those can be applied and received and obtained by the city of Boston clerk's office. Um, you know, some additional steps. Uh, all restaurants are required to obtain a common victual license. Um, from the licensing board. Uh, all restaurants, food service facilities are required to have at least one full-time certified food manager employed by the restaurant. Um, you know, that individual doesn't need to be on the premise every hour of every, you know, every hour of every operating hour, but they need to be a full time employee of the establishment. Um, that same person would also need to obtain allergen awareness training certificate. Um, and you can learn about it here as an attachment there. Uh, kitchen exhaust hoods and ducts require. ISD building review and Boston Fire Department, um, you know, review and certification. Um, you know, you can see the BFD website for more information on commercial hood and duct uh, maintenance requirements, you know, general information on that as well. Um, you know, and then in order to complete the health permit application process um, an application and fee needs to be uh, filled out and paid for uh, the best line of communication to reach ISD health to start the process or you know continue to follow through is uh, ISD health at boston.gov uh, all of our administrative and management staff, including myself, are all on that email so that we can provide you quick, responsive um, information and services as needed. And before we can inspect the restaurant to open to the general public, uh, each restaurant is required to obtain a certificate of occupancy or a certificate of inspection. Um, your completed food service permit application, I referenced a moment ago, um, you know, a copy of your food managers, certified food manager certification and allergen awareness training, which I mentioned, you know, before those need to be submitted to us, copies of the certificates that that individual obtained. And you need to submit to us a copy of the common victual license that has been issued by the licensing board of the of the city you know and just please note if you didn't pay your fees when you had your plans reviewed you must bring your payment when you visit the isd office uh, you must also bring copies of workman's compensation insurance and your federal tax id number um or social security number primarily be looking for a federal tax id number if all your paperwork is in order, ISD Health Division will set up a um, uh, opening inspection request. The Health Division will help you set up your inspection and confirm your appointment at the, at the time of inspection. The health inspector will ensure that you are compliant with the code, uh, regulatory code requirements, and answer any questions that you may have. 
our goal is to get you to open to the public and um, you know all these documents and and certificates are required at that time so mm -hmm. thank you thank you did you want to say anything else prior on this part or okay okay, thank you. okay. okay. Good afternoon, John Ulrich. I am the Assistant Commissioner of Environmental Services. As I said before, um, we are the road control and mitigation team, but we also license uh, dumpsters and trash uh, for small businesses. Every commercial business in the city of Boston is required to have a site cleanliness license. When you would apply for that license, you would already have a contract set up um, with your trash removal company. That could be you have a dumpster on site, you have trash barrels on site. You also could have um, nightly pickup um, in front of the, um, the business. You would come to ISD uh, with a copy of your trash contract, fill out the application. It's a $50 fee um, and it's an annual inspection. And what we're trying to do is just making sure that the trash is stored properly and that it's being picked up commercially. The road and control side, um, if you're a commercial business, um, you know, a, a real estate office, something like that, road and control is not something you have to worry about unless you have a road and issue. But on a food establishment, a restaurant, there should be some kind of preventative uh, service that you, you have. We are available all the time to assist um, at environmental services. We have a, a staff uh, that manages the, the licensing program. Um, and so we're available um, if, you, if you need us. ISD environmental at boston.gov. Okay, and this is just um, an overview of the process uh, chart so um, you know if you're a business owner uh, again you know depending on what you're looking to do um, from start to finish we've kind of right. created that outline uh, and like I said we've um, shared this um, guide with um, Ali and her team so we want to make sure that you have access to it uh, but it is a great way um, to just show from start to finish uh, whether you're getting ready choosing a location designing your space and getting your approvals it lets you know uh, which divisions that you're going to need to deal with so uh, and then we also listed some important contacts. So between our team, um, Office of Economic Development, Small Business Unit, Equity and Inclusion, um, our building and health uh, information is all here, uh, Boston Fire Prevention, uh, the Entertainment Division. And so again, um, want to make sure that you have all of that information available to you. Um, and lastly, we do have a ton of uh, resource links and guides. And so uh, this one pager will take you directly to our ISD website. Uh, you can learn how to apply for a food service permit. Um, you can get in additional information on food manager certification program. We also have great road and prevention tips, uh, a video tutorial on how to apply for a short form, um, how to schedule a walkthrough with our fire department, um, how to apply for a permit online, uh, submit Build, uh, building plans online, uh, get the status of a permit, uh, look at the uh, BPDA zoning viewer, uh, which will provide uh, the ability to search an address for the applicable zoning district information. Um, and we also have our 311 link, uh, which allows you to uh, send information for non-emergencies around the city of Austin. So again, if you are uh, in the community and there's trash in the area or you'd like to report a non-emergency, you can definitely use that 311 link. I um, mean, again, some of, most, most of our guides are in multiple uh, languages. Uh, so we were intentional about making sure that it's equitable. Um, we have pest management guides. We have guides on how to open up a food establishment uh, and navigate the permitting process. Um, and so again, we, we wanna make sure that you have uh, these resources available to you. Um, you can generally email our um, general inbox, isd at boston.gov and obtain copies of our paper and digital guidebooks. Um, and again, we're always happy to help that uh, general inbox also. Uh, I manage that inbox as well. So if you have questions and you don't have a particular person's email address, you're more than welcome to start there and we'll be able to get in touch with you as soon as possible. So we will open it up for questions and comments. I have a question and a promise. Uh, so 
first of all, I just want to thank you for this really informative presentation. It's really demystified a lot of what's been really, really a, a little bit opaque for me in, in the beginning of this process, just being that it's my first time trying to open a food service establishment. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the question I have is really about timing uh, because as we're looking for spaces, um, I feel like we kind of have to sort of strike a balance between sort of, you know, getting a space, a particular space, and then reaching out to ISD or, you know, reaching out to ISD to make sure that this space is going to serve our, our needs. So I was just wondering, when do you recommend that folks um, really initiate this whole process? Um, is it, you know, as we're kind of in the negotiation stage um, or what? I, I saw that, you know, the zoning tool, we can look at that ahead of time and kind of maybe get a sense of whether or not we'll need a long form or a short form. But, but what do you guys recommend in terms of when we should reach out to you? I'll take that one. Um, I would suggest reaching out as soon as you have the idea, even before you rent that space. If you see a storefront and there's an open um, space for you that you think you might want to go into, start doing the research between our office, the fire department, um, to make sure that if there are different things that you need to deal with, we're all giving you the information up front. Then you're working with your design team to make sure Yes, I need permits amongst both divisions. My zoning's good, but as soon as you know, I would say definitely reach out. It's great these tools are out there as far as your zoning goes and all the resources, but the hands-on back and forth questions and answers, I think you get a lot more from it, to be honest with you. So I would say right away, and do not sign a piece of paper for a lease until you know you can put your use in that building properly. Yeah, I would concur uh, exactly. I, I had three ideas off the top of my head. Do not sign a lease prior to knowing what the allowed use and what your process may need need to be before you do it. Um, the earlier any folks can submit applications or business plans to ISD help, the better. Um, you know, again, I. I once you once somebody has an idea and a, and a plan and a potential location, the process I would advise to start, but don't commit by signature to something where you'd be obligated to start paying rent until you have all the uh, details of what you may need to do to obtain the appropriate use and occupancy. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Yes, definitely, definitely. And and it also reminded me that uh, in terms of a, a little bit more of a specific question, um, the the part of the process where you actually have to have like a draft floor plan or something that might require an architect or a drafter, um, is that we, we should have that before we kind of enter into conversation with, with you all or, or not necessarily? I wouldn't say necessarily you need that to begin with. I would say you're coming in here to make sure that you can occupy that space. And then what do you need while you're having the conversations with us? What are we looking for? We're looking for the stamp on that drawing right to begin with, or do we start out with the schematic? You know, do I need a license builder right away? It's all the questions back and forth with us. But I would say definitely find out what you're proposing and then come in and have those conversations with us. <clears throat> or you pay that money to do something. Okay, great, thank you so much. Sure. Any other questions? Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I actually have two questions. Hi everybody, thank you for doing this. Uh, I'm Jonathan Lang with Impossible Shows. Uh, we're looking to do live entertainment installation into a space. And both of my questions evolve around um, when a space has been unoccupied by a tenant and has has gone back to the landlord. When, it talk, when we talk about responsibilities and applying for permits of a space, so for example, with the floor plan, um, one of my, my big questions is, what is the difference between construction 
versus cosmetic changes. If I'm moving into a space that was occupied for 10 years by a previous tenant, and I'm not planning, I'm not planning on making any structural changes to that building as it exists. Hey, hey, John, yeah. is your what's the audio? Something's happening. Is that sounds that's like not me? I can hear it, but that's not me. We can hear you. It might be, we, might have, be the, uh, we have the air conditioning that's coming in and out, so that might be us. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> we can hear you. Okay. That's yeah. loud. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Keep going. Yep. So, yeah. No so, is there a defined difference uh, in building code about what is con what is construction changes versus cosmetic changes? And if we're not doing any major changes, can we use a pre-existing floor plan to start the, the permit process? And then my second question is, when it, is for the fire department, when it comes to life safety systems, in that same, same vein where a tenant, a previous tenant has left, the building has been occupied, unoccupied for a length of time, um, and you're now negotiating, I'm assuming that the landlord is responsible to keep up all life safety systems. So at what point, what should we be going in and expecting that they are up to code on so that we don't have to bear those costs as a, as a new tenant coming in? Uh, let me address the, the first question uh, in terms of uh, what's cosmetic and, and uh, what's structural. Uh, I mean, if in fact you're moving to a space that looks and operates exactly as 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 you uh, would use it, um, and there's there's no there's no um, construction, well then uh, obviously there's there's nothing to submit in terms of uh, in terms of structural work. You may still need to do a long form in terms of establishing uh, the use of the premise. Um, but if there's no work, there's no work. Um, we distinguish work here in terms of long form and short form. If, if again, it's cosmetic um, and you're not moving walls around, uh, you're not um, impacting, impacting the structure in any way, uh, well, uh, then you'd use a short form. If in fact you are moving walls around um, in a commercial space, uh, you may very well need life safety, like the like um, you know sprinklers, fire alarms. Um, uh, even if even if you're not doing structural work, but you you need the this this life safety stuff, you'll still have to do a, a long form uh, for the, for for that. Um, to your second question about who is responsible um, for life safety, yourself or the landlord. Uh, we don't get into that relationship. We're simply looking at the application um, to see, you know, whether or not the space is going to be up to code for the use that you're 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 intending. And so uh, we'll let you know what you need, and uh, you may have to negotiate with your landlord in terms of who's responsible for making sure that the work gets done. Okay, but yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, so Jonathan, I was just going to add, you know, from the health, health division perspective, we oversee and license the restaurants. If a restaurant is coming in for a plan review, we focus on the menu of the establishment, the proposed menu. Although you may not move any walls or anything like that, if the concept of the restaurant is changing, say from a uh, bakery type place to a full scale barbecue restaurant, there's different types of equipment going in there as part of the cooking process. There would be different exhaust hood, ventilation, ancel system approvals needed. So, um, although you may not be make you know uh, significant layout changes to the business, the type and use of the restaurant is going to require additional building and fire department review for the types of equipment, exhaust, and ancel systems you'll be using. Um, you know, if for example, a bakery was in there before and you folks want to kind of open your own type of bakery. You're going to utilize the existing equipment that's there. 
or you're going to replace it with similar type equipment in similar use. And you're really going to freshen the place up, say, with some paint and, um, you know, maybe a different type of flooring on the existing floors, then, you know, we may not need to do a plan review with you. So I hope that kind of helps a little bit. Um, and Jonathan, one yeah. thing I'd like to just say is read your lease. A lot of times I've had decades of experience of landlord versus tenant. And when they break down the lease, the lease says you are responsible or I am. So make sure you're all paying close attention to that. Right. But that's at the time that we take over possession. My question about life safety is more of in the interim. At what yeah. point, if we take any space in general that was owned by one tenant, the tenant has moved out. The, the space is now unoccupied by a tenant. So it reverts yeah. back to the, the ownership of the landlord. What does mm -hmm. the, what should that landlord be doing with life safety to make sure that that building is up to code? Like if it's been been unoccupied for six months versus five years, what can we ask that landlord? Can we ask that landlord for anything that says that that building is in life safety compliance before we take possession of it? Uh, I, I would say, depending on the scope of your project. Uh, as it becomes more complex, uh, you, you might want to, at that point, if, if there's a lot of things going on, consult with a, a, a fire prevention engineer or a, like a code consultant. Mm -hmm. uh, they might be able to walk you through. If it's a more simple project, um, you know, simple, slight change of use, fairly you know, routine business, uh, you might not need that. You could certainly request from the landlord uh, fire alarm reports, if there are any other life safety systems, if there's a fire pump, a sprinkler system, uh, when was the last time <clears throat> that those buildings uh, systems were looked at? Uh, obviously, if it's a vacant building, uh, what should happen and what does happen are two separate things. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, like, you know, if it's unoccupied, the, the word we use in the fire department would be vacant. Mm -hmm. um, and if that space is not making a landlord money, it's it's unlikely that they're aggressively pursuing the uh, the systems in the building. It's just sitting dormant. Uh, so to reoccupy that, the fire department would be looking for test reports um, and possibly coming out to on-site uh, witness some of those tests. Uh, so you can certainly request that. Again, if you're not familiar with the process, uh, there are code consultant companies out there that are available that, that can assist you with it. Um, one of the things I, I can use a, a real world scenario right now, we, we have a location in the city where uh, a landlord rented out a space in a commercial industrial type building and they were discovered, they were doing some things that they shouldn't have been doing, but the immediate adjacent neighbor is a school. Um, so things like that, if, you, if you're doing something that's really outside the box or it's like a chemical or an industrial process, Make sure that the intended use of your space um, is compliant with the with the codes as far as who your neighbors are. Like, typically, we don't like schools to be next door to drums of chemicals and things like that. They, there's okay. certain requirements for fire separation. So a code consultant can certainly help make sure before ISD and, and BFD gets involved that, uh, hey, you do have the, the two-hour rated wall or the four-hour separation, um, that your suppression systems are, sufficient for that that building and that type use yeah thank you yeah yeah I, I think the short answer is that uh the due diligence is on on yourself with respect to that um but having an understanding of what the requirements are going to be uh will help you negotiate with your landlord in terms of um who should be responsible for what yeah yeah, and that's what I, I will tell you from my experience so far. I've gone to three different code consultants who've told me my project is too small and they won't take it. Wow. Yeah, wow. There, there definitely seems to be a sense that when most changeover is happening, it's a, it's a major project. And literally for those of us that are in a small business, some of our stuff is so small, it's not that some, I'm, I'm finding that some consultants don't want to take the work. So thanks, this is very helpful. Thank you. Okay, any other, I, Therese, I see your hand is raised. Is that about a cream no, frosting? My yeah, question, 
I love the frosting. Yeah, um, yeah. for real. <laughs> my, uh, my question was, um, if you're going into a space that was pre-existing, has been shut down for a while, um, how about bringing things up to code? Like something could have been operating as a pizza store for like 20 years. They leave. When you, the new tenant goes in, you have to bring it up to whatever the current codes are, correct? Yeah, so from the from the health division perspective, um, you know, restaurants, uh, there is no such thing as a so-called grandfather clause. Um, the way the health division approaches it is if there's a build out of a new restaurant or food service establishment or a renovation to an existing facility, the establishment would need to come up to current regulatory standards. Um, so that's the perspective from the health division. If you've been operating for 20 years uh, in one manner, if you do a renovation um, to your existing location, we would have to get it up to current code and regulatory, excuse me, regulatory standard. So I hope that helps. Paul, do you want to add to that or do you want me to? So for building purposes, we have pizza shops that go out of business and then a pizza shop will come in. If you're not doing major renovations to that space, a restaurant's a restaurant. For us, I would check a proviso from any previous Board of Appeals decision that it might have been granted to Jill's Pizza and now it's going to be Teresa's Pizza. So those are things. But once you start doing renovations and you reach a certain monetary number, that's when code differences will come into play as well, including ADA regulations, handicap regulations. Um, Paul, if you want to add to it, by all means, or correct me, please do. Yeah, I mean... I, I think the issue with small businesses is they're all a little different. And I, you know, if we can be helpful, um, you know, with an initial conversation to get a sense of what it is the person's trying to do, I think uh, we can help to sort of steer them in the right direction. Um, so that's, that's, that's probably the, uh, you know, the best answer is, you know, uh, check in with, with us as early as possible. And, um, you know, our constituent services, uh, they're great in terms of, you know, uh, meeting uh, constituents where they are and their questions and connecting them with the right people inside ISD. And um, we'll try to sort of um, get you going in the right direction. Any other questions? I see Lindsay had a question. Yeah. I have another specific question. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I also see one in the chat too. Um, but quickly, my question is related to the rodent division. Um, if there's a, you know, if there's a chance that a space that you're looking at has a rodent infestation, um, how how would you advise someone to proceed? Like if you're considering that space um, and considering sort of you know, potentially playing a role in getting rid of that rodent infestation. Is that something that, in, if, if you discover it in your own, ins in our own in inspection, is that something that's then just left to negotiate in the lease? Or is that something that um, the rodent division would then be kind of triggered to come in and, and intervene? Uh, you could definitely call 311 and report rodent activity. As far as the space, the landlord, if there's a rodent infestation, any kind of rodent infestation in a building, uh, it should be mitigated right away. So they should hire a licensed pest control company um, and produce a pest control report saying what they did, um, what kind of uh, lethal control they, they used, whether it was trapping or rodenticide, um, and then provide you with those service reports. Um, if it is related to trash and outside, by all means, you call 311. Um, mice inside, um, you call 311. Rats outside, 
three one one, an inspector will will respond and uh, and do a full inspection. If we can access the inside of the interior of the property, we will. Does that answer your question? I'm sorry. Yes, yes, it does. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, Lindsay, do you have a question? Yes, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. So I didn't want to take any time away from the participants. Uh, so if, if we have a minute to do this one, that'd be helpful. Um, first of all, thank you. This presentation was so helpful. Um, I really value it. Um, I ran a business for 10 years. Now I'm working for the city, kind of advocating for small business. So I'm sort of wearing two hats when I ask this question. Um, it does seem in these conversations that there's like, of course, due diligence is always needed. But it does seem like there is an unequal amount of responsibility on the folks trying to lease properties versus the folks who own them um, and may or may not really be engaged. And I find that frustrating on both sides. I'm just curious what your thoughts are with that. Honestly, I feel the same way, Lindsay, seeing people that come in here and already sign on the dotted line that I'm going to do a child care or a bakery. Um, and then they come in only to have us say, like, I'm really sorry, but you have to start at the beginning. I don't know how we would be able to help with that, like regulating that better. I think sessions like this help with people. Let me go on and, oh, they recorded that. Let me see what's needed. Maybe this is something that will help with that. But the frustration is understood on both ends. Like, it, it's sad to see somebody that comes in, they put their life savings into it, and they're five months down the road already into the project. Then they, they don't have the doors open yet because the landlord said, permits are your responsibility. Just to add to that, I think it also might be helpful to, when you're hearing those things, uh, let us know because I think if there's enough um, you know, information on how often that's happening, maybe from a policy perspective, we can start having conversations with the mayor and our staff as to like what outreach efforts we can do, um, how can we help with this? So um, I, I appreciate you for bringing that up as well. Um, Commissioner, your hand is raised. Yes, just Thank to you. chime in there, it seems to me that this would be though governed by the contract that the business and the landlord sign amongst themselves. So it's kind of an agreement that they come to amongst themselves. Let me know if that's not right. So just an encouragement and invitation to really review those. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, I, I, I think that's that's the problem. If you know, a lot of this is is between the landlord and the tenant um, and not sort of the purview of inspectional services. But where we can help and why I suggest, you know, starting the conversation with us is, is <clears throat> We we can let the 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 uh, tenant the business owner know what it, they're getting into with respect to the permit up front, and they can know whether or not that's some stuff, that's what they need to go back and negotiate with the landlord ahead of time. I think uh, these issues usually aren't they aren't familiar aren't familiar with it. Um, you know, as as Jill said, often uh, uh, light leases are are signed. Uh, folks start paying rent and they're months into paying rent and they find that they, they can't open. So um, we'll try our best if people have conversations with us up front so that people have the information uh, to, to go back to their landlords and, and negotiate um, uh, what needs to be done uh, rather than signing a contract uh, sort of in the dark. Teresa, you had an, an, another question? See your hands raised. I don't have a question. I actually have a comment. Um, I've looked at more spaces than I'd like to have had to. But um, I think one of the things as a small business, sometimes we're um, very afraid to like, you don't want to ruin the deal. But mm -hmm. really asking for tenant improvement, asking for months of free rent um, while you're doing renovations and things like that. And really leaning on your realtor who will get their commission in the end anyway to really be that advocate for you. Because if you don't ask, you're 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 no one's gonna offer it. It's like when you're going into a new job, you're like, should I ask for what I want now? Or do you think I can get a few more weeks of vacation once I start working there? You're gonna ask ahead of time. 
So I think mm -hmm. in terms of like tenant improvement, um, you want to ask for that because you never know. Maybe they're willing to upgrade all the systems or maybe they understand that that needs to be done. But mm -hmm. really, like, I feel like you have to be a big advocate for yourself and also like have your realtor work for their commission in terms of like, what do you think we can ask for that we might be able to get? And if it's mm -hmm. three months rent and not six months rent, hey, it's still three months of free rent while you do mm -hmm. some renovations and things like that. So I think really going into that as a negotiation and not feeling like if I ask for something, I'm going to ruin this deal. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I appreciate that comment. Okay, Robert, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, sort of long time listener, first time uh, questioner. Um, <laughs> As everyone's trying to negotiate their uh, leases and figure out the timeline for this sort of thing, what sort of lead times are people seeing as they're applying for permits? You know, sort of the response time between applying for permit and getting that issued or getting, you know, feedback on that uh, or, for example, calling for inspection and then having that inspection happen and getting, you know, final certificates. What sort of timeline, lead time, et cetera, can we expect? I think every case is unique, to be honest with you. You know, if you're a restaurant going into a restaurant and everything's easy pleasy, it's, you know, minor alteration because you're, you know, basically doing cosmetic. The alarm and everything else is okay. The fire department knows that you're not doing any kind of upgrades to fire alarm, sprinkler, changing out chairs and tables and rugs because then there's another piece that goes into play there. If it's straightforward, it's all on you and your contractor, then come in. I work predominantly with the permits, which are for the minor ones. Those come in and out in the same day, whether it be an electrical or plumbing or sprinkler, and those are the subs permits. Um, if you're trying to file for certificate of occupancy, working together with the fire department, they can go out the door in three to five days, as long as your company, your contractor is staying due diligent with the process. Most contractors in Boston now know the lead time they have and they need between both departments. Now, if you're a brand new, okay, I'm a restaurant going to a daycare. I mean, if it's not an allowed use, you're looking at possibly, you know, three to five months permitting process, get permits issued. Okay, do your work, get your certificates. It all depends on the situation. I'd be a fool to try to give you an exact, hey, it's three days, five days, one month. Um, it just really depends on what your space is and what the allowable use is. And then what your systems out there are for fire protection. Yeah, I understand that's not an easy question to to answer because of all the different cases, but I feel like that that helped with my particular case. Thank you. Reach out to us if you have to, Rob. It will help out. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Sure. Any other questions or comments? I think we're good. Well, again, thank you for the opportunity. And I uh, just want to go back to the page. Um, again, important. We, we have a ton of important um, resources, guides um, that can help you, even if you wanted to get, like I said, a digital or we can, I can stop by your business and, and give you a physical copy. Um, we love to connect with our small businesses and work with our uh, internal and external partners to help you. So, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, like I said, our general inbox is isd at boston.gov. So a lot of your questions can start there and we'll make sure that you're connected to the proper departments in order to, to assist you. So, and this is also being recorded. So I believe I would love, we'll make sure that this goes up on our ISD website and also share it for folks um, who would like access to it. Um, and if you just want to stay in touch, uh, feel free to reach out to us if, if we could be helpful in your current projects or if you have questions, uh, we're always happy to help. I just had one question for all of the ISD folks, because it's come up a little bit before. But before I ask it, thank you for a wonderful presentation. I know a lot of the space grantees have wanted to speak directly to many of you um, and know that there are people behind the emails and people behind the website. And so very grateful for all of you um, taking time to speak with all of us today. And to go off of that, are there opportunities like office hours or anything like that that ISD is offering for folks to pop in and if they have a quick question or is that something that um, could happen? So we're pretty much Monday through Friday, eight to four. 
um, always open mm -hmm. for customers. Um, most of our calendars, we're here and working. Mm -hmm. um, we do currently have a Tuesday night offering from four to seven. But, you know, you, you spacey grantees, you know, like, come on in, pick our brain. If we have a lot of people coming in on those nights, it'll keep being offered. If we only have a few, then you'll be Monday to Friday, eight to four. But we are all here. All of our counters are open, fire department as well. We're all here to answer questions. And if you'd like to see a workshop, if you have any ideas to, uh, please let me know. Like I said, send an email uh, to that general inbox. We'd love to hear what you would like to see and the resources that um, you're interested in, in uh, using. So we want to be as helpful as possible. Awesome. Thank you all. Nice to see you. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank have you. a great day. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Thank you.